And we are now live in the lab with Matt Nevert. I'm Matt Carmen, Chief Creative Officer and Founder of Fermented Pixels. And I'm Everett Minshall. I'm the Business Development Manager, as well as the Media Producer, I guess you could say, for In the Lab. Um, it's a great episode this time, right? Yeah, this episode we speak with Matt Monahan of Other Half Brewing. Um, we talk about his background coming up as a uh, brewer. And what else, what else do we talk about? There were a lot of good nuggets of wisdom in this. Uh, he's a very insightful person. Um, yeah, we talk about, you know, data. We've talked about management styles, how you evolve from a group of three guys into opening up almost, I think he said three locations. Yeah. You're coming up. So yeah. it's great. I mean, it's, it's rare that you get to speak with someone like this. So. Yeah. They're very popular. They have like a kind of a cult following where people line up down the street here in Brooklyn. They're a Brooklyn based company. Um, just a really cool guy, really cool. Um, great tasting beer. Um, I think mm. I mentioned that like three times. In the <laughs> yeah. Cause I'm drinking yeah. it. It was the IPA <laughs> delicious. I highly recommend them. Um, and we had a great time talking to them. Um, we are Fermented Pixels. This is sponsored by Fermented Pixels. We are a digital creative agency located in Dumbo, Brooklyn. And we specialize in everything web, mobile application, brand development. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so I think that's a good intro. Want to yeah. move it on? Sure. And we now we are we now move ahead to uh, Matt Monaghan. Great. Hey, Matt, we have, now we have Matt. Welcome to the, we are now live. Welcome to In the Lab with Matt Never. All right, right. thanks for having me, guys. Sure, sure, I really appreciate it. So, um, actually, I'm drinking one of your beers right now. The, I'm a huge IPA guy, um, and I got the, uh, the Green City. The double Dry Hop Green City. Yeah, it's fucking amazing, dude. And I like, <clears throat> I was going to be like, no matter what it tastes like, I was going to be like, yeah, it tastes good, but I'm like, this really fucking tastes good. Like, you know what I mean? Like this, <laughs> this is really delicious. Um, and I, I'm a big IPA. I'm not an expert. I have friends that are really experts in it, but I'm not, but I know I love my IPAs and the flavor in this is just really good. Killer. Good to hear. Very good. So that was excellent, man. So um, can you tell us a little bit about how you got into this? You know, what's your background? What brought you to become a brewer? And uh, you know what's the story behind uh, behind Matt uh, and uh, the three of you? Maybe give us a little. Yeah, you know, kind of um, how it started. Where I'm it a, I'm one of those guys that that I've, I've I've done a lot of different things. Um, I've done everything except work in an office, uh, which has been sort of a life goal. But um, you know, I I played music professionally for a little bit, and and oh. but, you know, for years before brewing, I was uh, I was a cook. And so I've been, you know, I've worked from neighborhood spots uh, up through Michelin, res Michelin star restaurants from, you know, New York to California and, and DC. And, uh, you know, I, I sort of, I got into brewing uh, because of a, a couple of different chefs that I worked for that were, there were amazing home brewers. Um, and, you know, you got, you, you pretty much have all the equipment you need in a, in a commercial kitchen to make beer. So, you know, we, we'd put in a full day and then stick around for a few more hours afterwards and, and bang out a batch of homebrew. And that was really cool. And, yeah. um, you know, and I, I've never really taken any hobby I've gotten into like yeah. lightly. And so I was like, I should do this for a living. You know? yeah. Yeah. I couldn't make any less money than I was making cooking yeah. food. So, it was, <laughs> yeah. you know, I didn't really have shit to lose. And, and, uh, and I, you know, so my, I have two partners, um, Andrew Berman, uh, who's our COO, is is also uh, has a he's a professionally trained cook as well, and so we were working together in other restaurants. Uh, you know, we had done um, uh, a couple of private chef gigs together, uh, like extended extended uh, live-in gigs at places, and and so you know we had been friends for a couple of years before. Uh, I decided to pull the, pull the plug on cooking professionally and, and sort of jump into into brewing. And I was working at a contract facility in Clinton Hill called Greenpoint Beer Works is where uh, my other partner, Sam, who's our brewmaster, he was, uh, he was the head brewer over there. And, um, you know, and, and I think Andrew and I had some, some scheme to start like a vinegar company or something. And, 
And, uh, you know, we were like, well, we could do a, a small, you know, uh, microbrew brand out of using the pilot system at Greenpoint. And that's where Sam was like, you're an idiot and you need to make this on a much larger scale for yeah. it to be viable. And, you know, and so uh, we ended up, I was like, all right, well, you know, let's, and Sam had been making, Sam is making the best beers I'd ever had uh, ever from anybody uh, anywhere um, at, at that facility. And so, you know, we, we, we did like this private, we did like a pop-up restaurant together. Mm -hmm. We're like, all right, let's see how it goes. We want to do something together. And so Andrew and I cooked the food and Sam brewed like four different custom beers and we sold out like two nights of it. And it was at like this old uh, church in Soho. It was with like a, a dinner. It was like a supper club called Coach Peaches. It was like something Stephen Colbert did mm -hmm. for like 10 years. What um, kind of what but kind of it was the same organizers. What kind of food? It went really it? well. Uh, I mean, what did we make? We made like a, I don't even remember, man. We like, you know, seafood salad and uh you know so, something you could serve you know two seatings of 75 to, to 85 people at okay. a time and get everything out of the kitchen hot so are you it ended up going really well we had good you know restaurant groups asking for can we get your beer at, at you know yeah. momofuku and things like that and we're like holy shit oh, wow. there's something to this yeah so it kind of just spiraled from there yeah. you, did you have a beer then that you're an iteration of something then that you're still doing now like, was, did you have one that sort of spawned the idea of starting other half or did you just no, find I that you had a talent for it? Well, you know, everything I learned about beer, I, I really did. I really did on a commercial scale and, and, and really right. all the most valuable things I know I learned from Sam. And so, you know, he had contributed a couple recipes for a brand that was being contracted at Greenpoint yeah. that they just didn't recognize as, as being as good as they were. And, and so, you know, but we all knew I was, we were like, this is, this is something that needs to be uh, promoted and, and spread out amongst the city for people to try. Like I never had anything like this. And that was, it wasn't even like hazy shit. It was just, you know, it was just, mm -hmm. it was everything but like the look of it, you know, it was the heavily dry hop beers, the low bittering, um, you know, all the late hop edition things that, that sort of uh, are the key, key things that stick out with the styles that we make. Um, but you know, yeah, I can't, no, there wasn't anything specific from that, which we carried on and still work on today. But that that's was cool. like kind of the catalyst though, right? That was like the, that's what made you guys realize we, we, we're onto something now, right? Yeah. I think when we have like, when you have like a, when you have a beverage director from a very well-known restaurant group, like someone like Momofuku at the time, like when that yeah. happened, this was like 2000 and eight 2009 yep. maybe something like that nine or ten i don't know something like that uh when they're like we would serve this in our restaurant you know then you're like yeah. oh okay yeah. you know somebody yeah. who knows the fuck they're talking about and really has a, is a they want it and yeah, so right. we're like all right well other people are going to want this for sure yeah yeah that's awesome man so i um how did you come up with the? I know I I I saw this actually on a documentary today. I found you guys, but just so everyone else knows, um, how did you come up with the name Other Half? Like, what was the inspiration behind that? I know. It's, yeah, like I, I don't know, man. There really is no like fun story. Like, there's yeah. no you know like grand revelation. Like, we should be the other half. You know, it was more like Sam said, I like the 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 name Other Half, and we we're like, well what can we tell a story about to sort of make that relevant because yeah. you know, we do yeah. like the name and, you know, it sort of just ended up being, uh, you know, a way to sort of talk about being the, the other half of the industry, you know, not the commercialized side yeah. and, you know, the AB constellation side of stuff, but just, you know, those of us, you know, doing or doing, doing something creative and unique and yeah. uh, on our own. And so yeah. that's, I think that's sort of the, the life it took on honestly well that's pretty cool yeah that was cool um yeah it's amazing where um beers have come to today um i don't know how old you are i'm 48 years old i remember back in the day when you walk into a bar and it would be like they have like sick beers they have like stella you know like when i was 25 you had like stella and heineken on tap and you'd be like oh wow this is a fancy place and now you go to a place that's like if they don't have 20 beers you know it's boring and I know it's beautiful though, really. I mean, it's the, you know, the beauty of capitalism and um, just innovation, you know? 
Yeah, it is. It is. And it's nice to see like uh, just the, uh, how it even got promoted. Cause it's not done on like a national advertising scale. Like there's yeah. not like TV commercials right. for craft beer. Yeah, like right. this is literally like one of the most organic growth movements yeah. of a product ever, which is really cool yeah. to see. Absolutely. Real grassroots, right? That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Um, so when you get, when you were getting started, so you had people from Momofuku, you said, um, did you have like, and then you started a restaurant and that evolved into other half or? No, we did the pop-up restaurant, right? And it was only two days. Right. We did the custom beers and one of the people that happened to be there was a, was a beverage director for that group. Um, mm. So in, in bringing them up, I'm only saying like, that was like someone for serious that, that we encountered mm. that took the product seriously enough to ask for it. Um, you know, so we were like, oh, we should do a brew pub. And then we started looking at the cost of right. opening a brew pub versus just a production facility. And it's, you know, production facility is a fraction of the cost. You know, if you're not building kitchens and, yeah, right. you know, your, your FF and your budgets are a lot, lot less when you, yeah. when all you have to do yeah. is put in tanks and, you know, just yeah. manufacturing equipment. So we opened up, uh, you know, a two vessel, 15 barrel brewery with, you know, three 30 barrel tanks and a 15 barrel. And that was it, 3,500 square feet. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, that must have been exciting, man. I mean, it's such, it's a very saturated market. I know a friend, a good friend of mine who's like super into brewing. I, I don't know that much about it, but I have a lot of friends that are really into it. Um, and a friend of mine tried to do it and he just, you know, was a, he tried everything. It was an epic failure. Um, not epic. I mean, he tried. It's still, he made great beer, but it was just, you know, it was so tough. I mean, the industry is so... Right. It's so competitive. I mean, it's yeah. so competitive. So, I mean, I just, when you guys, you guys stand out, like it's an amazing thing. So, I mean, I would imagine that's, that's not, I mean, obviously you got to make great beer, right? I mean, that's, uh, you know, that's number one, right? That's just like kind of on set. Um, yeah. You have to make great beer. But then after that, it's about marketing. It's about personality, about the way the can looks and all that, you know, all that kind of stuff that goes into it. Yep. So, um, so was your growth like, was it word of mouth and things just sort of, cause I mean, we were look, when researching your guys's, you know, other half. It's like, you guys have lines that go down the block. Yeah, it was really I mean, it just sounds like you have a really loyal following. It, yeah. it, uh, you know, we, the, the entire company is based around community. Um, you know, we, yeah. we grew the brand when we opened, we actually didn't even plan on ever canning beer. Um, uh, you couldn't mm. sell beer directly to the consumer. The laws weren't there uh, when we opened. So we were going to have to make beer, put it into kegs and sell it through bars and restaurants. That was the only way we were, we were going to make money. And that's how the business plan was developed. Um, you know, so we spent our time selling what we did to beer buyers, to bartenders, you know, yeah. Yeah. bartenders yeah. are the best salespeople in the business you know they see more people oh, no, than anybody else <laughs> yeah you know? they've done it to me yeah, believe me really insightful yeah. like they you know they're they they really are like you know you you ask your bartender all sorts of questions all say, hey what should mm -hmm. i get what should i have you know sure. and and if if one if your product is is really good that's that's 90 percent of the work the rest of it is mm -hmm. just making sure that you know we got facetime like my partner sam and i were out ourselves you know mm -hmm making beer in the morning or, you know, two first two, three days a week, you know, and out selling it, you know, out, and delivering out. it yep. the rest of the week. And, you know, we were like, we're going to put this in the best beer bars in the city with we, who we think are the best tastemakers in the city. Yep. And we want to earn their trust. Um, and they did the selling for us. And, you know, um, right. when, when, uh, when the laws changed in May of 14, um, the craft act was passed. Um, we were allowed to sell beer, uh, in our tap room yeah. and cans to go. And that law alone changed the beer industry in New York forever. Yeah. Um, you know, that was, that just set loose. What year was that? 2014. Yeah. Um, you know, and now, you know, craft beer generates almost $5 billion yeah, in revenue, yeah. uh, <laughs> 25,000 jobs just in the state of New York. Oh, um, yeah. 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 So it's, you know, it's, it, we've become a pretty massive industry. Yeah. Um, and, and it was because of that. And so, you know, we can, we canned our first beer 
February of 15. Yeah. And we couldn't give it away, you know? <laughs> like, really? We were waiting on like these printed cans that we had. And uh, in the meantime, we were like, well, we gotta, we gotta put something out. So we did a sticker. Um, and the sticker ended up being sort of more of a hallmark for us and yeah, the car for other just, half than, yeah. it's one of than the any that printed cans. Yeah. It's so funny because I was just telling my girlfriend, I was like, because I'm big into like, I'm really, we are a creative agency. We do mostly digital stuff, but I, I grew up in print design. And I, I think that it's the can. I, I noticed like all your designs are, they're, they're great designs. They're, they're kind of all over the place, but it's a, but and yet everything's consistent. And I, I was trying to think like, why is everything so consistent? And it brought me back to the can, the can itself, because everything's wrapped around the can. And the designs are, you know, there's definitely, you know, this, um, there's definitely consistency in the design, but it's still, you have a variety of all these designs and yet they still, there's a cohesive brand, which I found really respectful, but I think it was, was the, it's the can, right? Too, like the label around the can, which kind of brings it all together, right? That, yeah, it's, that was you know, it says, it says it's like a bespoke product, you know, it, it that it's, definitely you know, yeah. it, it you even see nowadays, you know, the larger, yeah. larger brands like Sam Adams doing printed cans that yeah. look like stickers. Mm -hmm. um, mm. But like for us, you know, we do 250 different beers a year currently with the two facilities that we have, 175 of them are new uh, every year. Yeah, and so true. like the, just the, just the right. turnaround process for printing something we re uh, yeah. onto a can and then ordering 155,000 of them at a minimum just isn't possible. Yeah, so this is literally the only way yeah. that we can operate. Which is awesome. Mm. So you can That's be more cool. agilic. You can be more agilic. You can kind of get stuff out there, experiment more, right? There's yeah, not that definitely. much investment in being able to do that kind of stuff. And you can even yep. take chances on label designs and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so that's, that's it allows you to commit to not have to fully commit to something yeah, and then absolutely. lose your yeah. shirt on it if it doesn't yeah. work. That's great. Yeah, that's a good. Yeah. So, how did you guys? Um, what kind of change did you make during COVID? Have you guys been able to <laughs> able to stay afloat? What, what has that been like for you guys? And uh, what kind of challenges have you uh, have you seen? Um, yeah, I mean, we 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 completely shut down all on premise. Um, you know, we went to uh, an online ordering system. Uh, for curbside pickup and home delivery yeah. and we do have uh, certain releases where we direct ship to all the places we can legally do that um, mm -hmm. you know it, we our, our tap room is a now fulfillment center um, mm -hmm. you know our we use two days a week we have to use the warehouse um, for, for organizing fulfillment but because we self-distribute anyway um, we have a fleet of trucks um, we had mm -hmm. drivers so you know we just instead we lost, we lost hundreds of draft accounts overnight, right? So, you know, the time in which these trucks were normally spent uh, going through the city, hitting all these different bars, they're now free to go uh, in a traffic list, New York, uh, right. go deliver to people's homes who are now home all day long and not gone from yeah. eight in the morning until yeah. seven or eight at night. Uh, so, you know, if you need a sign of delivery, someone's there all day. Um, so, you know, we were able to switch gears pretty quick. Um, it was fucking scary. Um, yeah. But, you sure. know, it, we, uh, we have an amazing team of people that were just willing to step up to the plate and do whatever it is we needed them to do, despite what their current job description says their job is. Yeah, those mm -hmm. people you need them. Those are the, you know, yeah. I mean, I've got, you know, I got bartenders driving trucks. Now I've got yeah. sales guys doing full on, you know, fulfillment mm -hmm. logistics. Like it's, uh, it's wild. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, it's sort of everybody doing everything they can. Um, you know, you, there's no real alternative. Like yeah. you either make it work or you fail. Um, yeah. And so, you know, we're Absolutely. just, we're, we're a sort of make it work, get it done company. You, know? you probably have a company culture too, right? That's very kind of tight. I kind of get that vibe from the, you guys, right? It's a, yeah. a company culture. There's like a vibe there going on that you guys probably, you know, I don't know how much thought you put into it. It was just natural and it happened, but um, that's but a little bit of both. definitely part of it, right? Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. I mean, you can't, um, these are some big asks of people, especially since we were, yeah. uh, we were able to remain open as an essential business uh, when we're getting zero guidance from the state, zero guidance from the federal government on, 
you know, yeah. PPE and things like that. Yeah. And we've got, you know, a, a, a group of people who are willing to come to work every day yeah. and not just do their job, but end up doing more than what they were mm -hmm. doing before. Yeah. Um, you know, we try to, we try to include our staff as much as possible on the decisions we made to sort of make the workplace as safe as possible so that they felt they were included in that. And, yeah. you know, I think a pre-existing company culture and just a, just an overall pride in working at the place definitely helped with that. Yeah. And, you know, I don't think we can take credit for creating it. Uh, I think we, we care very much about it, but you know, we've, we just are very, very fortunate to have an incredible group uh, working at other half that, uh, you know, we're, we're thankful for every day. That's awesome. Going back to distributing, um, I read an article where you mentioned that like you're able to tailor to the accounts. When you say that, do you mean like you can, it's just more like it's, it's better communication between those draft accounts or those other accounts that you were distributing to? Um, I think probably what we, I'm not sure where you pulled it from, but you know, the, our overall stance on self distribution is, is that, uh, there's, we control our product from the time it leaves the building to the time you get it into your hand. Um, mm -hmm. There's, there's no question about how it was treated, uh, what temperature it was, uh, mm -hmm. whether it was dropped down a stairwell in a keg. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if the, the account has an issue, say, hey, this keg isn't pouring well, or this sort of tastes off. You know, I have someone that works directly for me go over there and find out All right. what's wrong with it, you know? Right. And like, you're not like, did that person really know what they're talking about? And it's just like, yeah. when you're able to talk to the brewery or a direct representative of the brewery about an issue you have, good or bad, it's much better than having to go through four different channels to get an answer. Um, yeah. You know, and, and that's that for us, it's just like, you know, that that's our beer showing up on our truck with our driver. And it's our sales guy that's going to answer the phone yeah. if you have an issue. And it's that philosophy for your other location as well? Yes. Nice. Yeah. I mean, we do. We have some some outside retail partners, um, especially as of late, you know, just trying to, you know, losing, you know, 40 percent of your accounts overnight is 40 percent of your volume. Yeah. which we then, ha uh, that was in kegs, which now needs to be packaged, yeah. uh, which then needs to find a home. Um, yeah. You know, and the name of the game is selling beer, right? So we don't mm -hmm. want anyone to lose their job. We don't want anyone to take a pay cut. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and so we 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 put like a, a single, we have Green City, the one, a version of what you're drinking now um, that go, that, that can, that's in like a couple Wegmans or things like that. But again, it's our truck dropping it off. It's yeah. our, it's our salesperson on the relationship. Um, we have a couple key other retailers too, which do an incredible amount of volume, but these are very personal relationships we have with these business that's, owners. It's, that's kind of great, right? Cause you're keeping control of your whole brand experience, right? So everyone that comes everything. in contact with you guys, and that's really, I think that's key, right? Especially in this competitive market that you guys are in, right? I mean, yeah. that kind of consistency, that consistent brand, that personal feeling like when people come there and, you know, I think right, that's gotta be a big, you think that's one of the big reasons why you guys have survived so long or it depends. I think it's, great, I think it speaks to, to manageable growth. Yeah. You know, like it's, it's very easy to build a big plant in the middle of nowhere uh, at, at nothing per square foot and make yeah. as much beer as possible and put it in as many stores as possible, yeah. as many States as you can. Um, but you know, that's a very short runway in the grand scheme of things. Like you can do that for a few years and then it's going to bite you in the butt. And you can see that through the contraction of, of all of these larger multi-state footprint brands that are pulling yeah. back in house, you know, and investing in on-site brew pubs and on-site sales and things like that so that they can, it really is about controlling the ex your experience, your individual yeah. experience with the brand. And I think that's just a change in the way the market works. Because like back in the day, obviously, I mean, people were more about like, you know, I have my five brands, I drink my Budweiser. I mean, that's really back in the day. I don't know why anyone would bring drink Budweiser. But <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there was like this, like, and nowadays it's all about that. The niche, the whole idea of niche economy is so big today, I think. And 
you know, you really have to have that kind of niche attitude and you have to deal with things specifically to your audience. And I think that there's, first of all, a lot of money to be made that way. And it's also a beautiful thing because people get what they want and, you know. So. Yeah. And I, and those beautiful I, things create are, they, they have longevity, you yeah, know? And, yeah. and so like, it, you know, we, we have a very loyal yeah. customer base and I think that's, attributed yeah. a lot to the amount of uh, energy we put into fostering that community and making Absolutely. other half feel yeah. like a home, you know, and not just a business or a brand. So, yeah, I guess that would lead, and well, Everett had this question, I'm sorry, I'm gonna steal your question, but it was, um, how do you get most of that, a lot of that through social media? What do you, how do you guys use social media? And uh, is that kind of how you build it or is it just more of a grassroots when you come to your your place or is it, is, is, how do you build that? that kind of um, uh, I think all of the above you know it's we, we we primarily use social media to, to market what's available for sale and what's going out into the market um, but you know we spend a whole lot of time and money uh, participating and traveling to all of these events globally um, you know okay. a lot of a lot of collaborations with people all over the planet um, you know, we spend a lot of time in the scene. We have, you know, we have uh, Anthony Finley is an employee of ours. Is strictly a brand rep. You know, his job is is he's his job is to be out there, you know, engaging with with these people and um, who are fans of ours and making new fans and and meeting, you know, meeting people that are in markets outside of our own. And and it's yeah. just. You know, we have a really tight knit group of people that come into the bars too. Um, yeah. You know, these are these are very active people on their own in social media. Yeah. You know, and you yeah. know, a couple of them that work for us have very have humongous followings on their own. And so, you know, it's just we were we've always tried to be as inclusive as possible and meet as many people as we can and yeah. and uh, be a part of of anything that helps grow the industry. Um, yeah. And just you know, uh, foster that. Do what we can to yeah. to to keep it going. But it all comes together. Yeah, I mean it's a beautiful thing, really, to be honest with you, because we look the way the way things used to be. I don't know. I find it's very inspiring the way um, we're becoming more niche. I know that we're getting more separate from each other, but I think it's also a beautiful thing the fact that people get what they want. You know what I mean? And there's like these little pockets of industry, and it just you know it's just more choice is better. I think. Yeah. Yeah, the festivals we do uh, have been also really helpful for that too. I mean, we throw yeah. two, uh, if we ever get to throw festivals again. Um, but, you know, we did, we do Pastry Town, which is like an adjunct and, and, and Imperial Stout Festival. And we do Green City, which is really a hot focus thing. And, and yeah. those are, you know, 2,500 and 4,000 yeah. people respectively uh, that come together and, and there's yeah. nothing like it. Like it's just, yeah. you know. And, it's one of the few places where you can, you spend a lot of time all the rest of the year online with people whose faces you don't really get to see. And then all these mm. people are there, you yeah. know, you get to there, you get to actually meet them. Any um, idea when the day, we, sorry to interrupt. No. I think it'll happen. Uh, Cause I was just looking, I was actually just looking at that. And I know the dates are going to be uh, obviously with because of COVID. Have, um, well, we're going to work on, we're working on, we're working on some alternatives to it. Um, uh, we haven't announced yet, but you know, it's in, it's in process, but you know, we'll, we'll have some more, some more info yeah. on that in the future. But well, yeah, we definitely, there's a need right now. Um, Absolutely. people just want to feel involved and in, in a part of something still, you know, even more so now. Yeah. They're done. Stuck they're at home. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. So, We're all dying to get out. I can't wait. Yeah. It's like a great, yeah. it's a good time to happen again. It's been, it's yeah. been, we're working on it though, it's, for it's sure. Been, so uh, beer always makes it a lot better. Uh, <laughs> we, did, uh, we did a beer taste. We won't, I forget where we did it. It was in like, uh, this was years ago. I remember half of it. It was fun though. We just went to like all the different taste, all the different places. I think it was in Madison Square Garden on a section of that, but it was like, there was so many people there. It was, it was so much fun though. Yes. Just get a taste of like everybody's beer and like, you're just yep. like oh my God. And then well, halfway through you're, you know, you're a little, we, we rented a limo. So it was, <laughs> Halfway through, you were a little toasted, but uh, it was a lot. Yeah. And uh, I learned a lot. Nice. Yeah. So, uh, Everett, if you want to jump I was in. Just, I was just thinking of, I used to live in, like, uh, I used to live in Colorado. It was sort of my introduction to a bunch of craft beer. Um, I probably don't know as much as 
I, I'd say I'm a layman's person, but um, it's just kind of amazing all the different flavors that you can sort of experiment with beer. And I think that's sort of what separ separates it from the other alcohols. And how do you, I know you guys, you pump out, you said you had 250 different types of every year beers every year. Mm -hmm. How do you, how do you, how do you know when to start making different recipes? Is it always an evolving process? Do you, how do you, do you leave the ones that are really popular on tap or do you, you know, how do you, how do you um, keep innovating your the craft, I guess? You know, we, I mean, we're, we're constantly innovating just because I think we, we just get bored. And, yeah. you know, I, we, the majority of the innovation in terms of recipe creation, that stuff comes from my partner, Sam, who's our brewmaster. He's just been pretty incredible at, at kicking out recipe after recipe. And, yeah. and we have an amazing brew team, too, that's, you know, if he's got ideas, he can, he can go to them and then they really dial it dial it in as uh, in terms of technique but you know we we do track our top performers um you know we 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 scrub data from all sorts of different sites um to you know and we look at our own burn rates and and you know inventories day over day and and all that stuff to find out you know what styles move are in most demand which moves quickest um you know is that a is that an issue of abv is that an issue of how many times it's been dry hopped is that because it's a fruit beer or stout all that yeah. matters and so it's sort of all that information is aggregated into just an algorithm that basically gives us our top 30 yeah. um mm. and anybody can fall off or be added to that uh depending on how it's performing and so you know we wow. like to we keep we keep what we know is doing well on that list and inside of that, you know, eight to 12 week rotation. Yeah. Uh, and then it's back filled in, um, you know, about 25% of it uh, a week with new stuff. That's pretty, yeah, that's, that's cool. I mean, I guess I've never really thought that, you know, I guess they say like data is the new oil these days. Yeah. I guess, I guess I've never thought about applying that to a craft brewery. Apply, yeah. Data can be applied to anything really, right? It's, I think it, it is. It's, uh, listen, I am not. I am, I do not count well. I do not consider yeah, myself no. <laughs> as not my strengths. But we yeah. do have a couple people in, in yeah. at other half that are really, really good with data and yeah. making sense of data. And so, you know, they're like this. You know, it's funny how much of uh, what you sort of instinctively believe is working is actually working. Um, you mm. end up seeing numbers that 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 back it up. Um, but. You know, when, when, when something comes at you where you're like, kidding me? Like that did that well? And you just felt like it sucked. Yeah. You're like, damn, all right. Well, glad we have the data, you know. And give the yeah. people what they want, right? <laughs> exactly, yeah. Always give the people what they want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Does it, I mean, can you go into a little bit about maybe some of the challenges you've had of like expanding? Because I can't imagine going from, you know, just like yeah. you three to having – uh you know just making k you know for for draft accounts and then bottling it and then opening it up a second location yeah. that process must have its own unique challenges could you kind of go into so a little about the challenges of expanding yeah, yeah i mean we're we never thought in a million years that we would be a business of the size that we are you know we're just shy yeah. of a hundred employees now we're we've got Thanks. two more locations opening up you know, That's with great. another 50 to 60 people to be added to that. And, um, you know, we, none of us have ever done this before, you know, my <laughs> partners and I yeah. Yeah. never opened a brewery before, uh, before yeah. the first one. And, you know, and then we did the second one, but, um, it, it's trying to control as much of it as possible in the expansion and in the sense that you have to sort of prioritize you figure out what your priorities are before you want to expand right you always want to expand to make more money um but you always but you need to do that correctly right and so you you have to maintain product integrity so um you can't grow unless you're confident that what you're going to put out is as good as anything you've done before it almost has to be better mm -hmm. and so you know we did have one thing on our side is that we have been constantly growing since we opened and that's been, you know, whether that's adding a tank or two, whether that's adding five more tanks, whether that's when we added a centrifuge, 
um, or, you know, just a- anything to increase efficiency. You know, we've, we've been, uh, we've, we just upgraded our brew house about nine months ago to, to, you know, double its capacity and, and, and double the amount of vessels. Uh, we've always been in a state of growth and, uh, you know, just, I think the challenge is the same as any other business. You just, if you have a second location, you want it to be as good as the first. Um, you know, you want the beers to be as good as the first, um, you need, you need people to come from your first location to your second location so that when you build the team there, they under these new, this new group of people understands the company culture, um, your, you know, your, your tricks of the trade in terms of techniques and manufacturing, but customer service like what do you expect of that i mean we relocated uh four people uh to the to the finger lakes location from brooklyn when we opened that um i mean like (laughs) i mean two two of them are i mean actually more five people actually uh relocated up there they like you know we had huh they like relocating they were like okay and they were cool they were cool with it or well, it never forced. It was a volunteer. We asked. Um, you know, we always like to give give the option first yeah. internally to anybody that, that yeah. wants to do that. So uh, we had volunteers, um, luckily, luckily for us. Uh, and yeah. so, you know, the we have an incredible GM up there. She's uh, she's just she brought everything she knew from 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 Brooklyn up there and started as a bartender and. In, uh, in Brooklyn and just worked her way up to, to that position. But, you know, we couldn't get it done without uh, her there. And, you know, and, awesome. and yeah. like any management, right. You're just, yeah. you're, you just want your managers to, to, to be uh, yeah. the yeah. best versions of, of, of other half that, that there is at every location. And sort of, sort of hope that's uh, contagious yeah. in a sense. Yeah. Was it ever hard sort of letting go and trusting in trusting in those five that go up there to, I mean, I'm sure you follow up with whoever needs help, but as, like, I guess managing more people as, as time went on, um, did your management styles really ever change? Or did- totally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we work with a business, a business coach, uh, the three of us do oh, and, really? and, uh, and our, and our CFO, um outside like of sort of business coach. you got a business coach outside the company like someone to come in and... yes yeah a consultant so to come in yeah um, one of the biggest and... biggest things on this podcast sorry to interrupt you one of the oh. biggest things on this podcast we, we try to get people that we like love like but the biggest thing is we're talking about entrepreneurs and, and um people that like took something from here and brought it to there and how does that you know how does that that evolution work right because there's so many challenges between like, you know, when you're running your own company, you have a small, it's when you have to manage people, it's completely changes everything. Right. So the yes. idea of growing is such a, it's such a different role. Right. I mean, as, as you grow, so that's, that's really interesting. So you, what you did was you hired an outside person to come in and help you with that. Is that how that worked? Yeah. Um, I think, no, well, we hired an, outside uh, a, a business consultant to help us be better at our jobs. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, I, my partner, Andrew does, uh, he is the operations director for, and he's the chief operating officer. He runs the whole company um, and he works closer with, uh, with, with the consultant, you know, on, on extra time and phone calls than, than, than my partner, Sam and I, or my, my CFO Dave does, but, um, you know, he, he's been instrumental in helping us grow as, as almost as people so that, mm. because, you know, the only way you can grow is to under, be a better people manager and yeah. you need to understand the, the, the challenges and sort of seek guidance from people who've done it before you, yeah. uh, you know, and then our coach has, 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 uh, started and, and grown and sold, uh, some pretty incredible things. Um, and so, you know, we're talking to someone who's been in this, been in our, in our, in our shoes before. Yeah. And uh, it's nice to, you know, the, the less, you know what I mean? Like the, the more we've learned, the less we know. And, and it's just, 
being able yeah. to have somebody guide you and yeah. help you be better at, Definitely. you know, yeah. just being a better manager and, and helping manage your managers. And, you know, you just, communication is key. And, and if, you know, if we're just sitting up there in the office doing this and that, and it's really easy to lose touch. Yeah. Uh, and that's, yeah. Yeah. that's right. what we don't want to do. You know, it's, that, that's our biggest nightmare is to have it, yeah. have something we own feel foreign um yeah. as owners and and you know and executives so you uh, guys have a pretty clear idea you're just going to keep opening up more tap rooms or there other you know distributing to larger territories you know can um, you give me an idea of maybe yeah the next we have five ten years we have uh currently we have um a forty thousand square foot facility in washington dc that's under construction oh, um nice. that we're hoping to open uh in, in september um, and whatever form that takes, depending on uh, the, right, the shape right. of the planet, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, but the factory will be turned on this fall. You know, we'll be able to yeah. make product there. Um, we have a, another sort of experimental facility um, that is opening up in Domino Park, um, mm. you know, right yeah. on the water there cool. in, the, in, yeah. in the Two Trees location. Uh, there's good, Roberta's next to us. That has a small experimental system in it. Um, but that will be, you know, when, once we're able to, to again, have people inside, that will be a bar as well as a, an experimental brewing facility, um, to sort of serve awesome. that section of Brooklyn, which is, you know how it is. Like if yeah. you're hanging out in Williamsburg, not going way the fuck down to Carroll Gardens, like it's a, that's another yeah. world. Yeah. yeah. So it's, yeah, it's sort absolutely. of like, again, bringing other half to a different community. And, you know, we've, we've chosen to expand the way that we have with the sort of these on-site experiences and things like that, rather than just yeah. put our beer on shelves in different markets, because, you know, we still want to, we're still pushing that in-person experience. We're still pushing that on-premise experience. Um, you know, you, you've got to differentiate what you're doing somehow. And we feel Absolutely. that's the best way yeah. to do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. That's great to hear. Yeah. That's, um, oh, wow. Well, we're a creative agency, and I have to say, I really love, we're you know, obviously a digital design company, and I've been in design all my life, and um, I really love your labels. Like, I don't know, I, I love the fact that you've taken um, so much, like, you know, like each, like this, there's obviously a consistency, but there's also this uniqueness between each can and bottle and stuff like that, which will get me, I want to ask you a question about how cans and bottles um, you know, react with the beer because I've had some, heard some things, but, um, so what is your process with design? Like, uh, I mean, I love the fact that you, you're kind of all over the place because you have really clean, simple designs like this, again, fucking great beer. Um, and you also have like, you know, some kind of more far out there stuff. And, but again, it all seems to, you know, go together. Um, how was that? What was that process like? And uh, how did you find you have different designers or, you know, what, what, how, what does the design process work for you guys like internally? We've had, uh, you know, since our since inception, we've had three different groups doing our design. Um, we started out using a, a group called Small Stuff, um, who really sort of set the tone yeah. uh, for for which was sort of like this more min, like minimalist yeah. uh, typeface driven uh, bright color design. Right. And, mm -hmm. and from there, you know, we, we, we moved on, um, to a different designer, uh, Megan, who was, who sort of, that sort of set the guidelines, you know, we, we, and we were sort of able to create brand guidelines based on what we'd done for the first couple of years. And so she sort of took it, uh, to Megan Penman took that and pushed it, um, involved that a little bit further. Yeah. Um, you know, she, small stuff used a group, uh, they sort of, uh, you know, they, they use a consortium of designers to sort of do, do different labels. Some people did the, you know, one person did like the broccoli face, but someone else would do the typeface driven label. Um, but that was, you know, there were 10 or 12, I think, um, people involved in that process. And then, uh, you know, the, the owners of, of small stuff really, um, were directed that creativity and did a really good job. Um, That's the name. And then of after the small stuff is the name of the company. Small stuff, yeah. Um, 
And then uh, after Megan, you know, now we, we still work with Megan a little bit. And, and now we work with, a, with another agency out of Chicago called um, Stout, Stout Collective. And, you know, again, it, uh, the, the director is, is Matt Tanaka and he's got, you know, a few designers that he's worked with and he's sort of uh, helped us dial in more uh, the brand guidelines, you know, the colors and the fonts and the layouts, all that stuff, you know, very well. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and, 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 uh, you know, we'll work, we've been working with him for, for six months or so, uh, right. a little bit longer and, you know, and, and we sort of just move on and on. I mean, I think it needs to evolve Absolutely. visually. Uh, it still needs to evolve visually and so you know i think part of the process what we're understanding is that um it will always be a new group of people you know sort of just steering what is it's its own beast really i mean i don't even yeah. think we have much control over it anymore yeah. if we change it too much it wouldn't be other half yeah definitely. Um, so we just we sort of just want to we'll always just have fresh eyes looking at it you know giving us yeah. You know, a shot like, hey, you know, maybe you should push it like this. And we'll yeah. look at that and be like, that's, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. And we sort of just let people that are smarter and more artistic uh, take a look. And we know if it works and, and if it doesn't. So, yeah, that's good. Well, we like what you're doing, though. Definitely. It's got a very, uh, it's, it's, it's very interesting because you have so many things going on. But yet there's this consistency that uh, that seems to be hard to get with that. And um, I don't know, you, you do it well. Let's, let's just say, you know. Awesome. Appreciate it. So uh, that's why I wanted to talk to you. Um, it's it a is, lot of work, man. It's a, it's yeah, a I can imagine. It, it is. Yeah, it seems like it. Right. There's a lot of people involved in the process. Sure, and it's sure. just you know we we we're we're like currently yeah. looking for a uh, in-house design director and a traffic manager, mm -hmm. and you know this yeah. is it's just with another location coming online, it can produce as much beer as we do in Brooklyn. Yeah. You know, there's mm -hmm. many different SKUs, like it's about to get real yeah. difficult. So. Well, we're a digital MC. Uh, if you need any help, let us know. Uh, that's, nice. not what, that's not what we're here to talk to you about. <laughs> um, but of course, we're always going to be available. Um, uh, this is sort of off topic, but is there a difference why you would can something or bottle it? Yeah, that's the question I had. I, I Some people told me that IPAs do better in cans, and I don't know much about it, but is that, I love cans because they're so much easier to be around the house. Like, you know, they, I just like lifting them up. They don't have to worry about them breaking. Um, you, you know, they're easier to throw away. And uh, there's something cool, I don't know, retro about them, but uh, what is the difference the way they handle beers and shelf life and stuff like that? Um, you know, the, the less light a beer is exposed to, the better. Yeah. Um, so in terms of what's best for a beer, uh, an, an oxidation, uh, a, a, a can is best. Um, yeah. bottles are really good. Uh, bottles are good for, you know, certain bottles are good for, for, uh, fermentation, um, you know, yeah. that, that happens in the bottle where you need the strength because of the amount of pressure that builds, um, if you're carbonating a beer, uh... um, you know, but like Imperial, all the Imperial Stouts and stuff, mm. we could put them in the cans, but you know, there's a, there's a lot to be said about perceived value. Um, and you cannot sell, you cannot sell uh, an Imperial Stout for the same price per ounce in a can that you can in a bottle. Um, it just, mm. the consumer does not want it. I mean, but I don't want love bottles, right? Like that was like an old, it's, it's kind of like an old fashioned thing, right? It doesn't, it's not well, really it's heavy. It's, it weights, it, yeah. you know what I mean? It's got, yeah. it, it's, it's uh, cold, it's heavy. Yeah. It's, yeah. it feels substantial and, you know, yeah. weight, so weight equates the value, you yeah. know, and it's, mm -hmm. but it's not I can crush in, it. Yeah. 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 But it's not based in reality of how good the beer is though, right? At all. No, I, I there's I, only certain specific beers that really require being bottle. put into a bottle. Like you're not, okay. I mean, it, you, there are very few people that can can a Saison and not have it explode. Um, oh, really? okay. or leave it with the potential to, to, to really do some damage or just foam over. Um, yeah. You know, but you know, it, yeah, it's can, canning is much, much easier to work with on a small scale as a craft yeah. brewer as well. I mean, they show up in skids of, of 6,224 yep. cans a piece. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Bottles are pain in the ass. Yep. Um, you know, they're harder to store. They're harder to rebox. Yep. They're harder to label. 
Um, you know, so yeah. when we break something into a bottle, it's a lot more work. Um, yeah. yeah. And putting something yeah. in a can oh, and great. running it through a label is a lot. It's it's a lot more efficient. And for the style of beer we specialize in, uh, the, the yeah. majority of what we make being IPAs and hoppy yeah. beers, it is the ideal vessel for that beer to go yeah. into. So it tastes yeah. the best I when it gets to your house. I like the more nice. hip now, right? Too. Are they a little? I think they're a little more hip, right? I don't know. I sound like an old man. Cans. Yeah, it's. A little, I mean, I there's. Like old man's yeah. thing about this. You know what I mean? No, there. Well, I mean, no one's out there. No one's got a bunch of bottling lines in their brewery. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it's, yeah. most breweries are not very big and can barely get, you know. Yeah, of course. Yeah. The, the canning lines nowadays are, are pretty cool. They're pretty yeah. compact. Uh, they're pretty accessible to most everybody. Uh, and even if that, even if not, there's mobile can companies that get it done, yeah. but they're just easier. So you guys use the same can, the 16 ounce can, right? For pretty much everything, right? And then just do the label. Everything. That's awesome. Yep. Yeah, that's great. I was buying it. Um, yeah. Find that very impressive. Nice. Lots of so, you know, as a designer, so <laughs> great. Uh, yeah. So go ahead, jump in if you want. Over. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just before we wrap up, I want to throw maybe an unfair question at you and ask: Do you have a favorite beer that you guys make? Oh, that you guys make. Yeah. What's your favorite? Uh, I have two. Um, my. My favorite beer, and I think the best beer that we make is the one that you're drinking right now. The the, oh, the Green City is it. It took is, me a while to find this too. Like I was. It's only that. been slightly tweaked <laughs> uh, since we started so uh, making that beer. It's it's uh, it does that's what it does it for me. It's the right ABV. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not it's not too much alcohol, but it's also yeah. like I don't want to drink three to get to where I need to be. Exactly. But it, it's, <laughs> it's just a beautiful beer. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it showcases some amazing hops. And yeah. um, I would say my second favorite beer is the second beer we ever made. Uh, we still do it and it's all green everything. Okay. Um, okay. There's just that if you ever find that or whenever we put it out, we usually do a, a double dry hop version of it. And it's just, you know, it's a 10 percenter. Um, you know, it's a it's a nice. over the smack in the face for hops. Like <laughs> yeah, no, man, you just you you'll be surprised. It actually goes down easier than the than the regular. Yeah, no, you won't even know. The next thing you know, you're all fucked up. But uh, yeah, you don't even know. Yeah. Cool. So with that the, that I would have to say those Perfect. two. Those are my favorites. Awesome. Oh, I have one really important question for you. Uh, this is coming from the heart. How do you? I saw all you guys in a picture. I'm kind of a fat fuck. How do you guys drink so much beer and stay so thin? <laughs> no, I just with all the coffee. That was a oh, joke, man. obviously. But yeah. Stress. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, I'll tell you what, oh, though, no. man. When I weigh, I, I, I weigh with COVID, I got significantly more yeah. <laughs> than I used to uh, when I started. But yeah, uh, yeah now, now I just run, man. I run when I can. And, oh, yeah, yeah, that's the thing. And, uh, you know, brewer, brewers drink wine, too. <laughs> Oh yeah, you know, yeah. Wine makers yeah. drink beer, Wine's brewers a little drink better. wine, yeah. and, uh, and whiskey a little bit too. That's zero carbs. Yeah. Yeah, I got I got a bunch of that on the table back there. Nice, so. nice. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I love beer. Beer is definitely my favorite. I, I try not to get the real belly. So uh, I thought that would be oh, a yeah. funny question to end on. It's hard. Right, though. It's hard. <laughs> yeah, you seem like a really cool guy. Um, we would. Yeah. Again. Fun. Yeah. Thanks for really? thanks for talking yeah. with us. Yeah, it's been really yeah. cool. Absolutely. It'll be great yeah. to um, come down. Maybe you know I haven't been. I actually, I have to I hate to admit this, but I've never been there. I didn't. We we you know we, we saw a bunch of uh, videos and stuff like that. We just were looking for companies that were kind of on our vibe. And you know the whole yeah. this whole podcast is all about business and just business, but businesses we're interested in and like the vibe and just to kind of hear people that yeah. you know started from the bottom and now they're here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was a bad Drake reference, but anyway, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, is there anything you want to add to like, um, you know, give a shout out to things you want people to know about what you guys are doing? What's the next thing to expect? How do they find you on Instagram? Whatever you, you know, whatever you want to tell people out there, we're going to share this as much as possible. So yeah, I know. I mean, I think we always take time to just thank the people that have gotten us to where we're at today. And that's, yep. you know, that's the people that work. Those are the employees at other half and the customers that come back day, uh, day out and spread the word about us uh, more than we ever could on our own. Yep. Um, you know, we do have one project out there called the all together uh, project, which is 
uh, an open source recipe label, uh, the IP is open source and anyone can make it. And we just ask that, you know, a portion of the proceeds go towards uh, benefiting, you know, hospitality or, or honestly, at this point, uh, the state with the shape of, uh, of the world, any, any uh, organization you deem uh, is, is in need of, of support. So, um, you know, we have a website altogether.beer that shows, you know, I think there's, there's close to 800 different breweries in okay. over 50 countries over 50, in, in all 50 states uh, participating in this, in this project. And, uh, you know, you can go there and see who it is on a map, uh, where the money's going. Um, beautiful, yeah. and it's, it's just a really cool thing, but, uh, yeah, you know, just, I know always just a big, a big thank you to everybody that, that that's constantly supporting us and interested in what we're doing. We're very grateful. That's awesome, man. So what days, um, if we decided to like, I don't know, are you there certain days just in case we decided to like pop in one day and we'd be like, where the fuck is Matt? Uh, <laughs> Will we find you there? Or um, um, primarily right now, I'm working on the the new location in DC. So um, uh -huh. I work I work out of home, and then I travel down there a couple of days a week. Okay. Um, but you know, once once things settle back down, and we and we're able to get the tap rooms back open. You know, yeah. I'm, in there, I'm in there a couple of times a week. But you can always just reach out. I'm happy to meet you up. And if I'm not there, we'll take good care of you. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I'll just say, awesome. I, yeah, I'm, a, I'm a real good friend of Matt. We go long. We go back. <laughs> it was Sam. What's your yeah. other guy, Sam? Sam Hatt Richardson? And Sam and Andrew. Yeah, those are my partners. Andrew, Andrew. Okay. Very cool. cool. Oh, that was another question we had. To, I know it's kind of late now, but what is it like working with partners? Like, have you seen, I mean, I know you guys obviously seem to have a good bond. How did you guys, you guys met? Um, what do you think is the, I know this is kind of ending right now, but I forgot to ask this question. Sorry, if you don't mind. Um, but what is the, what do you think is the biggest plus having a partner and uh, like what is the biggest uh, draw like has there been some challenges what do you mean uh, the i think our, our biggest asset has been uh, our partnership. partnership yeah um cool. i think also I think. we were very lucky in the fact that um you know you're not the same person you are you know five six years later when you start a company yeah. uh you have to sort of evolve uh with your strengths and then recognize what you're not good at yeah um we all ended up being good at different things yeah and yeah. Right. that was huge because yeah. you can't be in other person's shit all day long they can't yeah. be in yours you have to trust that what they're doing they're doing the best at yeah. um but you know we've been able to grow at the pace we can because we're able to share so much of the responsibility in a group of three versus one person or a husband wife who are just take it home with them every night or right. just feel uh, like yeah. everything is yeah. on their plate. I mean, I've told anyone that's ever asked, uh, uh, you know, any advice on starting a business. And I, the first thing I say is find a partner. Um, okay, yeah. you know, whatever you give yeah. up uh, equity mm. wise, uh, your shot at succeeding just doubled. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, if it's successful enough, you're not going to care that you had to share it. You're going to be so glad that yeah. you didn't have to do it by yourself. So um, you would say, so, like, that's the way we're going to ask. That's one of the questions we ask every time is what's the, well, I forgot to ask, but uh, one of the, what, you know, like we're an entrepreneurial station. Really, that's what we want to do is push entrepreneurialism and companies that we like, obviously. And, uh, you know, what is the biggest thing you could tell people out there that were thinking about starting their own business? And I guess that would be partnerships and anything else you would say that. Yeah. Would, again, uh, just any, I, business, any business in general, just find a, a find a mentor, you yeah. know, it, like that was huge. Like I've always, I've spent no matter what trade it was, whether it was pl playing music or cooking or whatever. Um, you know, I've, I've, I sort of made a point to find yeah. or meet someone in that industry that is as good at something as I want to be. Yeah. Um, you know, and is like, you don't ever have to be the best yeah. if you can partner with the best. Um, but it, you know, it just watching someone else do it better than you can yeah. at the moment. I mean, there's nothing else is more inspiring than that. And, Absolutely. you know, you can tell if you're not getting better at what it is that you want and you're not becoming any better than the person that you idolize, then you, you're, you're sort of, maybe your road isn't the right road. Uh, yeah. You maybe need some course yeah. correction there. Yeah. Um, but you don't know what you want to be based on what you've seen. It's a lot harder to succeed. Well, uh, and that, and you uh, just need fucking, there's a lot of luck, a lot yeah. of time. Yeah, luck, man. Yeah. Excellent. Well, yeah, dude, it's been great, man. You've been, yeah. uh, you've been perfect. You've answered our questions like amazingly and uh, we really appreciate it. 
I know yeah. you have coffee, but I'd like to give you a cheers. Oh, cheers, man. This beer <laughs> is amazing. I'm telling you, I'm not lying here. This is delicious. <laughs> Um, I would have said it was good no matter what, but it really is fucking good. So um, <laughs> I would definitely, uh, I had I to tell with Jeff, yeah, just to let people know how good it was. Um, I'm an IPA guy. Uh, yeah. It was great, man. I really appreciate your time and uh, say hello to your partners and uh, maybe I'll, we'll see you around at the, uh, at the brewery. Let me know anytime. Keep us in mind. Take care, man. Right. Thank you very Thanks. much. Thank you, Matt. Thanks, you have a good one. Yeah.